Libraries are all but deserted these days, but maybe they shouldn't be because new research in neurology from the American Academy of Neurology indicates that brain activity, reading or writing at any age, could help with your brain later on in life, which sounds like a duh study, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It sounds like a duh study, but it's, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting to see actual evidence of this. Of course, this is a correlation study. Mm -hmm. What they did is they measured kind of memory in individuals who are aging, so mm -hmm. this was the the six years before they died, on average at 89 years old, there were 294 people in this study, and they, they gave them memory tests. And then they also they gave them self-report um, forms of, you know, how often do you read, how often do you do these kind of like mental tasks. And they found that individuals who read a lot tend to have a better memory later in life. And they even adjusted that for kind of neuro issues at autopsy. So they looked at kind of the level of neurofibrillary tangles, beta amyloid plaques, which are hallmarks of dementia, of dementia, hallmarks specifically of Alzheimer's disease. And so kind of even adjusted for the biological, the physical mm -hmm. kind of causes, or I shouldn't say causes, but hallmarks of these diseases, mm -hmm. they still found that individuals who read more had better memory recall and kind of less symptoms of dementia. Uh, what I was curious about is we see these um, these games and apps like advertised even in like in these videos that we're doing right now saying like, like improve your brain power yeah, with lumosity yeah. do do all these little brain teasers and your your brain's gonna it's like an exercise for your brain yeah is that can I really count on that I or? mean I personally am kind of like really critical of the woo woo you know we're gonna cure your brain or we're gonna exercise your brain idea. It, obviously reading, doing puzzles, playing games is always going to be better for you than not doing it, but mm -hmm. it, this is like one of very few studies that actually show this kind of an effect, and who knows, if, if there's a lot of really good laboratory research going into to things like Lumosity, I'd be interested to see that published research, but from everything that I've gathered, it's sort of like, you know, it's based on neuroscience. Well, yeah. But isn't a lot of things <laughs> like, based on neuroscience? I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Like, your brain working, that's the field of ne neuroscience is how we study it's the brain. It's doing it now. You know, and they'll say things <laughs> like, oh, it's based on this principle of neuroplasticity. And I'm like, yeah, you mean learning. Like, so basically, if I learn things, I will know them better. That's pretty obvious. So, um, yes, I mean, I don't see, I wouldn't say don't, don't play these games because they'll be bad for you. Of course not. And there's a good chance that they will kind of help with cognition later in life. But I don't know if there's any sort of measurable improvement of cognition by playing these different brain games, any more so than reading a good book or playing a video game. Yeah, video game. <laughs> I like those studies. Well, actually, I was going to ask about that because mm -hmm. it seems like if I were to to exercise my brain or just to utilize my brain anyway, like maybe I'm doing, str st uh, fil f not doing it now. <laughs> what if I'm forming a strategy or yeah. I'm doing something um, kind of s with statistics and mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I game. I mean, I mean, they are... kind of do the same amount of good or sure. There are very specific things that we can learn when we're playing video games, right? There's this kind of like video game transference to life phenomenon that's mm -hmm. been studied multiple times. People who play driving games tend to actually be able to utilize those skills on the road in high stress situations because they've been so heavily trained. Most of us aren't really trained to kind of drive out of a spin or to be in a high speed chase. You know, we don't mm -hmm. do that in our everyday lives to get better at it for when the when it really happens. <laughs> But a lot of people who play driving games actually do high speed chases all of the time and they have really good control of the wheel. And you know, it's, it's the same thing as pilots who are training on a simulator. So there are specific games that can actually very well improve our skill set in real life. Mm -hmm. Um, but specifically here, if we're talking about kind of preventing or mitigating cognitive decline, improving memory function as we age prior to death, it's kind of always been known that reading is good for you, yeah. that doing crossword puzzles is good for you, but it is interesting to see a study that shows a specific effect, and it looked like that effect was a 15% um, difference in decline. So individuals who read a lot had 15% less kind of cognitive decline or memory decline than individuals who didn't adjusted for all these other factors. I want to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. And whenever someone says that, that means they're about to say something shitty. <laughs> so get ready for this. No, um, when I see that this was correlative and mm -hmm. self-reporting, it makes me kind of 
wonder how accurate this is because when people self-report, you know, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I read all the time. I'm very well read. Mm -hmm. And when people, when things are correlated, it's not necessarily the reason why. Yeah, it's not causal at all. I mean, there's there's no way to be able to do a study mm -hmm. uh, that proves causality in a situation like this without mm -hmm. fancy statistics. Because the way to prove causality, or I should say, the way to provide evidence for causality in science, is to only manipulate a single variable. So we've got, you know, you remember these terms, the independent variable and the dependent variable. You manipulate the independent variable and you look for changes in the dependent variable. Mm -hmm. So specifically here, it would be read and look for changes in memory. Well, the only way to do that would be to take two groups of people and prevent one group from reading no for the reading final six <laughs> years of their life and allow another group to read for the final six years of their life, which is like an unethical study that's to do. That's horrible. So You're yeah, you can't, life. you can't do a study that's actually gonna show causality. You, it, and even then, it would be impossible or very difficult to control for all the other kind mm -hmm. of um, uh, intervening variables. So specifically, this is a correlative study. Um, but you know, it's a really large sample size mm -hmm. and, and and yeah, you never know with self-report data how much somebody's going to represent themselves appropriately. You have to hope. You know, there is there's always issues with polling. There's always issues with with self-report questionnaires. But for the most part, it's a it's a standard way to do research. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is. I mean, it's an interesting, if not duh, study. I mean, I remember talking to my grandfather before he passed away, and you know, I have a lot of kind of older friends, and it is really interesting to see that that struggle, and it's something that I'm definitely afraid of mm -hmm. as I age, forgetting where I put the keys, forgetting things about the people that I care about. You know, I already struggle with bad memory problems, and so I, I, I can never remember people's names until I've met them multiple times, and, and so any, thing you can do to help prevent that kind of a cognitive decline, I think is a good thing. And reading a book is free, man, and you don't need a prescription for it. <laughs>